Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Occlusal radiography is a form of intraoral radiography that allows the operator to visualize larger segments of the jaws than can usually be seen in periapical films. The technique can also be used successfully with children whose mouths are too small to accept standard periapical films. A variation on the technique allows the operator to view the jaws at 90 degrees to the long axis of the teeth. This videotape will demonstrate the techniques necessary to produce four types of occlusal radiographs. At the end of this tape, you should be able to determine the appropriate use for each type of radiograph, state the basic relationship between tooth, film, and x-ray beam, describe the steps necessary to produce each type of occlusal radiograph, state the criteria for ideal occlusal radiographs. The film used for occlusal radiography is similar to that for periapical radiography, except that it is larger, approximately two and one quarter by three inches. It is designated type 3.4. Either a long or short cone may be used on the x-ray machine. There are five basic steps required to produce an occlusal radiograph. Position the film, select the vertical angulation, select the horizontal angulation, center the beam on the film packet, make the exposure. Each step will be demonstrated for the four types of occlusal radiographs. The maxillary anterior occlusal radiograph shows large areas of the anterior maxilla and palate. It can complement periapical radiographs for large lesions or replace the periapical film in patients with anatomic limitations to film placement. An ideal maxillary anterior occlusal radiograph shows the maxilla symmetrically placed on the film with the anterior teeth the correct length. There should be no overlapping of interproximal contacts. The film is placed on the occlusal surface of the teeth with the long dimension of the film anterior posteriorly. The sensitive side faces the maxilla. The patient bites gently to hold the film in position. The vertical angulation is selected by using a standardized technique. The patient is positioned with the occlusal plane parallel to the floor. The vertical angulation is set at 60 degrees downward. This angle follows the principle of the bisecting angle technique. When the film is at an angle to the long axis of the teeth, the central ray must be directed perpendicular to a line bisecting the angle between tooth and film. It has been determined experimentally that the vertical angulation required for patients with normal placement of teeth is 60 degrees to the plane of the film. The horizontal angulation is selected to open the contacts between the maxillary central incisors. To avoid cone cutting, the beam must be centered on the film. If the center of the film is not visible, the central ray can be directed through the bridge of the nose and the apices of the central incisors to the film. To prevent lip line shadows on the finished radiograph, the patient is asked to close the lips before the exposure is made. The maxillary posterior occlusal radiograph shows large areas of the posterior maxilla. 
It can be used to demonstrate lesions too large to fit on a single periapical film. It can also be used to radiograph impacted maxillary third molars in patients who cannot tolerate normal periapical film placement. In an ideal maxillary posterior occlusal radiograph, the teeth are portrayed with the correct length. There is no overlap of the interproximal contacts, and the zygoma does not obscure the apices of the molars. To aid in beam alignment, centerline marks can be made on the film before it is placed in the patient's mouth. Another line, one quarter inch away from one long edge of the film, facilitates film placement. For the maxillary posterior occlusal radiograph, the film is placed on the occlusal surfaces of the teeth with the sensitive side toward the maxilla. The buccal cusps of the teeth on the side of interest are placed on the one quarter inch line. The patient is positioned with the occlusal plane parallel to the floor. The vertical angulation is set at 60 degrees downward the same as for the maxillary anterior occlusal radiograph. The horizontal angulation is selected to open the contacts of the posterior teeth. The beam is centered over the film packet using the previously marked reference lines as a guide. A taut string can be used to extend the lines representing the central ray from the cone to the film to verify the position. The patient is asked to close the lips before the exposure is made. The mandibular anterior occlusal radiograph is used in patients who cannot accept periapical films either because their mouths are too small or there are other anatomic limitations to film placement. It is also used to demonstrate lesions in the anterior mandible that are too large to be seen in their entirety on a periapical film. An ideal mandibular anterior occlusal radiograph portrays the anterior teeth with correct length and no overlapping of interproximal contacts. The teeth and jaw are symmetrically placed on the film. For this radiograph, the film is placed on the occlusal surface of the teeth with a long dimension anterior posteriorly. The sensitive side faces the mandible. The vertical angulation will be set at an angle of 60 degrees to the plane of the film, like the maxillary occlusal views. However, if the patient's occlusal plane is kept parallel to the floor, as in the other techniques, there will not be enough room to place the x-ray machine in the correct position. To avoid this problem, the patient is asked to tip the head back a comfortable distance. The top edge of the x-ray cone is lined up parallel to the plane of the film, and the vertical angulation is noted on the vertical angulation scale. The vertical angulation is set by increasing the reading by 60 degrees in an upward direction. Note that the exact angle depends on the amount of backward tilt of the patient's head. The horizontal angulation follows the median sagittal plane. Usually the contacts between the mandibular central incisors will be opened. The beam is centered over the film by directing the central ray along the median line of the chin at the apices of the mandibular central incisors. Before the exposure is made, the patient is asked to close the lips. The mandibular cross-section occlusal radiograph can be used to localize embedded objects in the mandible to show the extent of expansion or perforation of the jaw and to demonstrate lesions in the floor of the mouth. An ideal cross-section mandibular radiograph portrays the teeth in true cross-section, 
both buccal and lingual cortical plates should be visualized. The film is positioned on the occlusal surfaces of the teeth with the sensitive side facing the mandible. The long dimension of the film extends across the mouth instead of anterior posteriorly. The patient tilts the head backward as far as possible. To select the vertical angulation, the central ray is first directed perpendicular to the plane of the film. The open end of the X-ray cone will be parallel to the film. The vertical angulation is then increased 10 degrees in an upward direction in an effort to project the central ray up the root canals of the teeth. The horizontal angulation follows the median sagittal plane. Cone cutting is not uncommon with this type of radiograph. To avoid cone cutting, the point of entry for the central ray must be opposite the first molars along the median line under the chin. The ease of doing this depends on the degree of backward tilt of the head and the size of the neck. The patient is asked to close the lips before the exposure is made. It is possible to make a maxillary cross-section radiograph, but because the radiation dose to the patient is high, this view is not used often and will not be demonstrated in this videotape. There is no mandibular radiograph comparable to the maxillary posterior occlusal. For large lesions in the posterior mandible, an extraoral radiograph with a cassette film is the preferred technique. While all of the occlusal techniques vary slightly, they all require the same basic steps to produce a radiograph. Position the film, select the vertical angulation, Select the horizontal angulation. Center the beam on the film packet. Make the exposure. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.